Hello and welcome to our online service here at St. James and St. Anne's Churches. My name is Jacob and it's great to have you with us. Later on in our service, Paul Warren is going to be speaking to us about Psalm 34. But to begin our service, let's join together and sing our first song, Be Still. We come now to the confession. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commands and to live in love and peace with all. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, having received the assurance of God's forgiveness for all who trust in him, let's join together in this psalm of praise. Sing to the Lord all the world, worship the Lord with joy, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people. We are his flock. Enter the temple gates with thanksgiving. Go into its courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. The Lord is good. His love is eternal and his faithfulness lasts forever. 
And now we're going to sing again the song, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Time now for our reading from Psalm 34. I will always thank the Lord. I will never stop praising him. I will praise him for what he has done. May all who are oppressed listen and be glad. Proclaim with me the Lord's greatness. Let us praise his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. The oppressed look to him and are glad. They will never be disappointed. The helpless call to him and he answers. He saves them from all their troubles. His angel guards those who honour the Lord and rescues them from danger. Find out for yourself how good the Lord is. Happy are those who find safety with him. Honour the Lord, all his people. Those who obey him have all they need. Even lions go hungry for lack of food, but those who obey the Lord lack nothing good. Come, my young friends, and listen to me, and I will teach you to honour the Lord. Would you like to enjoy life? Do you want long life and happiness? Then hold back from speaking evil and from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Strive for peace with all your heart. The Lord watches over the righteous and listens to their cries. 
but he opposes those who do evil, so that when they die they're soon forgotten. The righteous call to the Lord, and he listens. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saves those who have lost all hope. Good people suffer many troubles, but the Lord saves them from them all. The Lord preserves them completely. Not one of their bones is broken. Evil will kill the wicked. Those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord will save his people. Those who go to him for protection will be spared. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everybody. It's really good to be with you again today. Let's pray as we begin. Father God, we thank you for today and we thank you for the word that we've just had read to us. And we pray, Lord, that you'll speak to us in Jesus name. Amen. Now, I think you'll probably agree with me that life has its ups and downs, its trials and its struggles, as well as the joys and the celebrations uh, in all the good times. I don't know what your personal experience is, but if we were, it's not really possible here on uh, uh, the computer and uh, where, whatever medium you're watching this on, but uh, if we were to do a straw poll of some sort, I would expect that nobody here could honestly say that they've never had trials or difficulties or hard times in their lives. And uh, even if you have, maybe that's just because you've been very fortunate to this point. And I'm sure that in the future, something difficult is going to happen for you. The thing is, you see, life is full of stuff and it's stuff that crowds in around us and puts pressure on us. And uh, we find that makes us stressed, it makes us anxious, and it gives us those difficult times. It's all stuff that we can't control. It could be our work life, it could be our family life, it could be the things that we do, our recreation. There might be conflicts or difficulties there. It could be our relationships or our money or anything else that you can possibly think of. There's loads and loads and loads of things which can cause us difficulties and struggles and strifes in our lives that put pressure on us. Sometimes it seems relentless and we can't escape from it. Uh, and if you ever feel like that, if you ever feel that the pressure of the world is getting you down and really pushing on top of you, then the Psalms in the Bible is a really good place to go. And then, you know, you can keep going back to the Psalms time and time and time again. And at the moment, we're looking at the Psalms to uh, our August sermons, uh, as well as some of the Psalms, selected Psalms through our August sermons. And today we've got Psalm 34, and it's a great Psalm if you're feeling pressured or finding life difficult at the moment. Uh, Psalms are an expression of real life situations and they help us to deal with the situations that we're in and the situations that we're going through, whatever they may be. And today's Psalm, Psalm 34, is a point in case in that. According to the Hebrew title of Psalm 34, it was written by David and it was written about the time that the events that were happening in 1 Samuel 21 were going on. At that time, King Saul was king of Israel and through a bit of a hissy fit of jealousy, he wanted to kill David and get him out of the way. David was fleeing from Saul and he ended up in a dangerous place and he ended up very much afraid. Now, you'll probably remember David in his younger days, uh, the story of when he went and he killed the great Philistine giant Goliath. He rejected all the armour they offered him and he just went out onto the battlefield with his sling and some smooth stones and he was able to kill the giant Goliath and he did that because God was with him. You can read all about that in 1 Samuel 17 and as we read on into the next chapter of 1 Samuel chapter 18 we see that God continued to give David success against the enemies of Israel and that he killed loads and loads of other Philistines. And because of that, David became more and more popular, popular with the people all around and about, even to the point where they started writing songs about him. And these songs, they showed that David was greater than the king. And that made Saul 
jealous and eventually he wanted to take David's life. So David was running away from Saul and he ends up in a place called Gath and that's where Goliath actually came from. And when he gets there, somebody recognises him. And so in fear of being found out, David fakes being insane so that the people there will believe that it's not him at all and will let him go. Well, that actually worked. The trick worked. David was let go and he left the city and he went out and he hid in a cave. And it's believed that when he was hiding in this cave, that's probably when this psalm was written. It was written in a very difficult situation, a very scary, hard time for David. So let's have a look at what he's actually saying in the psalm. What he says firstly in verses one to three is that he's giving glory to God. Even in his difficult situation, he's proclaiming his praises to God for all that he has done. But more than that, he's encouraging anybody who's going through what he calls oppression, who's going through a tough time, who's going through a difficult time. He's encouraging people who are feeling like that to rejoice and be glad and join him in praising God. And then in the next few verses, what he does is he gives testimony of how God has heard his prayers of help and how he has responded to them. Let me just read you those next couple of verses. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. The oppressed look to him and are glad. They will never be disappointed. The helpless call to him and he answers. He saves them from all their troubles. The angels guard those who honour the Lord and rescues them from danger. So he's praising God for all that he's done. He's even sharing with us testimony from his own experience that God has been good to him and has rescued him. And then in verses 8 to 10, he encourages people not to take his word for it, but to actually try it and find out for themselves how good and faithful God is. And to do that, they need to give honour to the Lord. They need to give him the honour and the glory that he deserves. They need to put their lives in his hands and to rely on him for all the needs that they have to be met. And then David says in verse five, they will never be disappointed. They will never be disappointed. But then we have a warning. And it's a warning to those who choose not to respond to God in the way that David has been explaining. Those who choose to ignore his love for them. Those who choose to reject him as their Lord and, well, they're not to expect him to bless them. And why should they when they turn their back on him? Now, the word that David uses for those who have turned to God is righteous. That means being in a right relationship with God, being in a right relationship with him, being right with God, not having a relationship that's broken or marred, but one that is right. Sins forgiven, his spirit living within us and the, the promise of eternal life forevermore with him when our earthly lives are over. Being in a relationship with God doesn't mean that we're excluded from all those different pressures of life. No, certainly not. We may even get more pressures in life because of who we are in Christ. But actually, what it does mean is that we have him to help us and to guide us and to lead us through all that life brings and throws upon us. And when troubles come, as they surely will, then if we are right with God, if we are in that right relationship with him, then we're in the best place to be able to deal with them. And when all those earthly struggles are over, we can rest safely with him for all eternity. So in Psalm 34, we have a psalm that reflects real life and all the troubles and difficulties that that can bring. But it's also a great psalm of encouragement to us. And we can see from David's own experience that God is faithful and will rescue his people from all that life throws at them. So I want to just finish by reading to us again verses 8 and 9. And it says this. Find out for yourselves how good the Lord is. 
Happy are those who find safety with him. Honour the Lord, all his people. Those who obey him have all they need. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for that encouraging word from Psalm 34 today. And when we are in times of difficulty and trouble, help us, Lord, to remember that we need you in our lives more and more and more, to turn to you, to put our faith and our trust in you, and to receive all the blessings that you have for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time now for our prayers. Let's pray. Almighty God, you make wars cease. You protect the oppressed and the vulnerable and you give wisdom to world leaders. And so we pray to you for Afghanistan. We pray for Afghans now living in fear. We pray for foreign nationals and Afghans who've worked with American and British forces who need to get out of the country. We pray that you would protect them. And also we pray that you would protect women and people the Taliban may persecute, including Christian believers. We pray to you to protect the world from terrorist organizations that may be harbored by the Taliban in spite of their promises. We pray that you would give clear thinking and wisdom to world leaders so that they would know what to do. And we especially pray for our brothers and sisters, 
Christians living in Afghanistan, for the churches there, that they would trust you in this time of trouble, that they would remember that Jesus is Lord over the Taliban. And we pray that from their lips, the gospel would sound forth as a source of hope and joy, even in these troubled times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray to you for Bermondsey and we think of the many struggles and problems people around here face. We pray for those who can't find a job. We pray for those with long-term health struggles or who have experienced mental health breakdowns. We pray for those living in unsuitable accommodation or parents struggling to raise their children by themselves. For all these people, Heavenly Father, we pray that you might be with them and help them and especially enable us as a church to provide a home and a refuge for people facing these difficulties. And through us, may they experience a new life in Christ, full of unshakable joy and certain hope in their present circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray to you for the ministry of the word at St. James and St. Anne's, for Bermondsey Weekly Message, at our Sunday services, during our Bible studies, and at Ready Steady Grow, and in our school assemblies. We pray that your word would do its work, bringing life and strengthening faith. Please bless our preachers and our teachers. And we pray especially for Michael Stokes preaching his first sermon next week. Be with him in his preparation and through him speak to us your words of life. Through your word help us to fix our eyes on Jesus and build each other up so that we might persevere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now in a moment of silence, let's ask God to help those that we know who are ill or struggling in any way. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is Now Thank We All Our God. Let's sing.
And now a final prayer of blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us. It's been great to have you with us. Uh, church is now open, so if you're watching this and you didn't know church is open, uh, you can come along to St James or St Anne's churches, 9.30 at St Anne's, 11 o'clock at St James's every Sunday. And during the week, Bermondsey Weekly Message comes out on a Wednesday. See you soon. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Red